everybody and welcome to the 2017 Medibank National Junior Classic. We have the under 18 girls grand final here today and with me is Brad Hayden, coaching director of Forestville and Scott Butler, director of basketball from Sturt. Welcome fellas. G'day, how are you going? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, what are you looking forward to in this matchup? It's a, a South Australian affair, uh, so what, what's going to catch your eye here in this one? Well, I, I think the, the star players um, for, for both teams uh, on Forestville have uh, five players from a, from a South Australian Metro team that uh, won a silver medal. And the under-18 Australian Championships in Townsville. Sturt have two players, and uh, I think it'll be the performance of the star players that uh, is really going to be the highlight of today. Yeah, for me, the highlight on top of that is um, really making sure uh, how all well the bigs are going against each other. You've got uh, Darcy Reeves being one of the most dominant uh, bigs in her age group, and, and Oz Camp, and been representing Australia at various tournaments throughout her career. Going up against a relatively up-and-coming big in uh, Lizzie Williamson for Sturt. So I'm really looking forward to see how that matchup develops and who can get on top of that one early. Okay, there you go. So just a uh, an intro into a couple of the teams and the path that they've gone to to get here. Uh, Forestville in the finals managed to knock off Ballerina Knox um, and in fact lost their first game of the tournament. Um, which is a pretty good effort to get here despite losing, dropping that first game. Um, some of their high scorers are Juliet Gordon, 8.8 .8 points per game so far of the tournament. She's number 54. And Darcy Rees, who was mentioned earlier, who has averaged 7.6 points per game and is number 55. From Sturt, uh, from their point of view, they managed to knock over Altona and Danny Nong to get here. They also dropped a game in the group stage, but are here today in the grand final. Um, Alyssa Brett, 12.6 points per game, is number four. She's one to keep an eye on. She also has averaged over five free throw attempts per game, so she will look to get to the line early. Uh, you've also got Zoe Walker-Roberts, number five from Sturt, who averages 10.8 points per game over the tournament, and Taylor Prenz Prenzler, 10.6 points per game, and is number 10. I think we're about to get into it. One minute to go before tip-off as the teams shake hands. I mean, I'm not going to get you to make predictions, boys, because I'll have a guess at who you're going to predict. Yeah, I think we're both going to side with ourselves there. Yeah. Uh, tough game to split, though. Um, and from a South Australian perspective, this is just fantastic for basketball over there. Yeah, correct. I mean, these two have probably played each other twice in the last four weeks, I reckon, Scott. And, yeah, they uh, have. yeah they have and, and it's uh, been one on one. So. Yeah, and but, uh, Forrester won the, the important one, uh, which was the, the state championship uh, about four weeks ago. Uh, actually won relatively comfortably in the end, uh, but uh, Sturt were, were competitive early, but uh, just the, uh, the, the depth of Forrester really, really was a, a major factor there. Uh, Sturt got their sort of revenge uh, uh, a week later, but uh, I think both teams were were uh, coming off the effects of a of a hard state championships, and uh, a, a few of the, the major players didn't play. Uh, it was really a bit of a nothing game. It was uh, probably a bit of a boost to Sturt to uh, who haven't beaten Forestville this year uh, to uh, to come away with a draw on that one. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, obviously today they're playing for much higher stakes and. Uh, you know, from, from a Sturt point of view, it would be great if these girls could uh, get the win, uh, get their first win over Forestville for the year at the, uh, at the most important time of the year. And we're just about to tip off. We are underway here in the under-18 girls grand final, and it's Forestville who win the tip, and they will start off, us off getting straight into their offence. There's a kick over to the wing, a bit of a pick-and-roll action here, and that would be a good start short offensive rebound and they're going to be crucial through this matchup another three point attempt that's two this time Sturt come down with the rebound and that was Julia Gordon trying to get herself started in this one Sturt looking to get into motion straight away Alyssa Brett with the uh, rebound um, she she might be the best rebounding guard I've I've probably ever seen uh, for, a, for a junior girl she, she's absolutely incredible as we see, Elizabeth Williamson start us off with two points for Sturt, and they that, get us underway. That's that matchup we were talking about. If Elizabeth Williamson puts together some decent points and maintains Darcy Rees, then it's going to go a long way to Sturt pushing this game. 
as we see a turnover mid-court. Sturt managed to get the steal. They did miss the shot, but they will bring it in. Inbounds play, just about a minute gone so far in this one. I think, Brad, also the, uh, the Alyssa Brett Ellis Sawyer matchup will be a, a huge one. Both incredibly tough players. Yeah. Both, uh, both decent players in the uh, SA Women's Metro team. Probably split the court time, I reckon, there with Alyssa, Alyssa starting and then Ella backing her up. Um, Ella's probably one of the more tenacious defenders in her age group that I've seen uh, for a long time. And Alyssa's got that little bit more offensive polish on her. As we see, a bit of a half-court trap coming from Sturt. Forest Bull managed to get around it pretty easy. Tough drive, but some good interior defense. And there you go, that inside matchup once again from Darcy Rees and Elizabeth Williamson. And this time it's Sturt that come on top. Sturt. Sturt's doing a good job there of packing you know, two or three Tough. defenders inside the keyway, not allowing the guards any easy lanes into the ring. Very good job collapsing on the interior. A bit of a, a false full court press then from Forestville, but they settle back down now into just a man to man defence. As we see, a pull up jump shot is good. Very nice shot from Alyssa Brett. As she looks to get going in this one, and here's this half-court trap that Sturt are having a look at. She can, uh, she can shoot well from the outside. She's a match-up right there because she can uh, get the ball to the rim uh, basically at will. Um, and uh, if, she, if she's shooting threes and pull-ups, it's, uh, it's a tough match-up. As we saw Alice Sawyer launch that one from deep. I think Forestville's been settling for the outside three-point jump shot a little bit too much already. I think that's three or four threes taken. And whether that is the Sturt defence or not is yet to be seen, but yeah, I have seen that also. I think, Brad, though, they're capable. They're a, they're a very good three-point shooting team. Um, so, um, no, yeah. no question. I, just, uh, I don't think they've quite settled yet as well as they would have liked. Sturt seemed to be uh, winning the contest early. Very nice shot. Elizabeth Williamson coming up again. Looked at a couple handoffs, but instead decided to pop it herself, and she goes bang. Good start here from Sturt, 6-zip. Forestville may be thinking about an early timeout. Uh, Lizzie Williamson's dad, uh, Andrew Williamson, uh, Red Williamson played uh, over 300 state league games or Premier League games for, for Sturt. was a very good player in his day. Uh, a member of the 1986 uh, 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 state league winning team. In fact, Brad, there are a number of um, uh, Fathers and mothers, uh, yeah, well that, uh, fam that, famous sportsmen here today, aren't they? That matchup that I was talking about before, going against Darcy Rees, that's uh, the daughter of uh, former NBL Adelaide Sixer Paul Rees. Um, so, couldn't quote how many games he's played, but it would have been Lots. up there with a lot. Yeah. Some impressive legacies being passed down. We'll also see that in the under 18 men's game, as the likes of Bradkey and Gaze are the names that will be featuring in that one. As we see at the free throw line, Darcy Rees knocked down the first, got Forestville on the board, and gets the friendly roll on the second. 6 2 early stages of this one. As we see a slight full court press, just looking to turn. Alice Sawyer pressing up on the ball. Can't allow baseline, little floater is good from Taylor Prenzler. And once again, Sturt looking to set up in this half-court trap. Yeah, fantastic little uh, floater, just uh, not not getting in, uh, uh, engaged to the uh, to, to the help defence from Darcy Rees and just floating it over the top. Just a, a classic move. There's a little two-man game here. Kick down on the baseline. Thought about the shot, came up short, but an offensive rebound. Some tough work from Forestville. Now they will. Be. I was about to say they want to get to the ring, but they pop another triple. Comes up short again. Still settling for way too many jump shots for me. Um, they're, they're good shooters, but they also have the ability to be aggressive drivers, and we haven't seen much of that yet. Terrific offensive rebound and take from Alyssa Brett, and we spoke about her rebounding game, and that was very impressive. Well, she's got three already. Um, I mean, she, at this rate, she's going to get 20, uh, and I, she regularly does that. Uh, again, I don't think I've seen a, a better rebounding guard uh, for a long, long time. Here's a quick, quick question for the two of you. What's more of a coach killer, offensive rebounds or missed free throws? Oh, well, I think the most would be offensive rebound off the missed free throw. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, for me, I think uh, free throws an added bonus that you go in, you're relying on the referee to make a call, um, whereas rebounds are something you can just get done right. So if you're a defensive team, you're focusing on defence, you're focusing on boxing out hard, 
Um, teams need to get to the free throw line every now and then, so I think as a coach you can live up with giving up free throws. You shouldn't be living with uh, giving up offensive rebounds. There you go. Couldn't put it better myself, I don't think. Do we see Sturt earned the turnover? And they will look to bring it down now. Kick to the wing. Another pick and roll. Good drive. Gets to that spot in front of the basket, but miss. Another offensive rebound and a foul. And guess who? Alyssa Brett at it again. That's uh, twice now you've seen Sturt's big Liz, uh, Lizzie Williams uh, set a good screen, allowing the guard to get deep into the keyway, uh, forcing, the, forcing a relatively easy jump shot, although that time wasn't hit. And a timeout on the floor, and it's a stir up 10 to 2 early in this one. Uh, quickly, we'd like to acknowledge and thank our naming rights partner, Medibank, for their support of the Medibank Classic this weekend. It's uh, very much appreciated, and it's been a spectacular event. Thoughts early in this one, guys? Well, I think. Uh Again, Sturt's playing more inside out. They're, uh, they're, they're getting the ball to the rim uh, offensively. Uh, and uh, outside shots are, are off kickouts. Um, Forrest are, are tending to play more outside in. Um, so whether that's, that, that's what they're wanting to do, whether that's um, part of the, the good defence by, by Sturt. I think Sturt are defending well and, uh, and rebounding well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think that, that is certainly the... the uh, uh, so far, stirred more inside out, and I think that, that that's the best way to play the game. Yeah, for me, um, I think Sturt's just settled into the into the game rhythm a little bit quicker. Forestfield's just seems a bit nervous again, settling for maybe stuff not in their normal routine and the outside threes. Um, I do like that timeout um, for Forestfield coach Lynn Holland there, trying to settle and make sure we reassess which way how we want to structure ourselves offensively, and hopefully have a bit more desire defensively. As Alyssa Brett knocks down the first and pushes the margin out to nine and the second and a ten-point game early. It'll be interesting to see how fatigue plays a role in this one. Uh, the trip over to Victoria and the sixth game, I believe, for both teams so far this weekend. Um, and high-intensity basketball all around as we see. A bit more structure here as Sturt have come out of their zone. Low post, that's a tough shot. The step through couldn't get it to go that time from Darcy Rees. And Sturt come away with the ball. A much better look, though, for Forestville there, although they didn't get the result. It's time to get some inside the key shots. As we see, Alyssa Brett, again, doesn't matter how she gets them in. They're dropping, uses the bank shot that time. A tough take. And hitting the ground there, Forestville. But that's what they want and what is what we've spoken about, getting to the ring, drawing fouls. I believe that was Amber Kaukun. Yeah, Amber has got one of the nicest finishes inside the keyway in terms of uh, just no matter what pace she's going, she'll finish it off. So that's probably a good hard foul there by Sturt, making sure she doesn't get it up to the ring. As you see, a substitution as well, Erin Blake stepping in for Sturt. At the line for two, desperately needing some points, and she hits the first. With these massive games, it is a case of who's going to settle in best and the earliest. And at the has been second is good as well some very nice free throw shooting and again with this full court press from Forestville just looking to take some time off the shot clock they got past it pretty easily then their Sturt and they look to get into their offense some up court this is better intensity defense from Forestville this timeout looks to have done some good things for them tough passes we're down to seven on the shot clock goes to work right hand layup was good again and Alyssa Brett is staking her claim early as the best player on the court. No question, her first six, seven minutes have been absolutely insane. And a nice finish from Darcy Rees down the other end, and this game is just taking a little step up a notch after that timeout. And one play there, and an impressive finish from Forestville as we see a substitution, and Madeline Griffiths steps in for Forestville. Better, better from Forestville there, throwing the ball inside on transition to uh, the, you know the best big player on the floor, uh, Darcy Rees. She's a she's a uh, quality uh, quality player, but she needs touches, and uh, she uh, she got she got a good touch there. As you see, a deflection and an out of bounds, and another substitution for Forestville here. Sees Lauren Marshall step in. See the tempo that Sturt's playing with at the moment. Every time they're getting that ball, it's uh, running it down. They're not allowing Forestville defence to get set up too quickly. Inbound play now. Good strip. Diving on the loose ball. Look at the hustle on that play from Alice Sawyer, who we spoke about earlier. 
Down to seven on the shot clock. There's a kick to the wing. Sturt need to get up a shot. That is a deep triple. And it rolls in. That is a very, very, very friendly roll from Taylor Prenzler. I mean, great D by Forrestal there. I mean, the, the shot went in, but you know, you got to like your, your percentages if, if you're playing defense like that. Again, looking for this post focus, and the double team comes almost immediately. Good wraparound pass and a tough finish from Alice Sawyer. And you've got to appreciate when a big is able to make those wraparound passes when they're getting doubled. Yeah, very uh, very good vision from Darcy there. It's quite hard for a big who's getting double teamed, having to look down to dribble uh, to then still see cutters coming through the key. That was really well done. So Sturt bringing inbound play after yet another deflection. There's been a couple of those early in this one. Kick out to the wing, long range bomb, back rim and out. As we see Forestville come away with the rebound and they might look to push the ball. Trap might be on here in the corner if Sturt can get to it. So that's the difference in the game at the moment. That would be Sturt running it down the floor a lot quicker. Forestville got two or three girls still jogging down the floor. Once again down the low block. Reach in foul again, and you cannot afford to do that. Alyssa Brett came up with the foul that time. And again, the early post focus of Darcy Rees after that timeout. Yeah, uh, another another post touch. So, you know, I think at the last time out, Coach Holland has, has probably said we need to uh, have some more low block touches for, for, for Rees, and uh, Forrest will have done it, and they're doing better because of it. And we see another timeout on the floor this time. And just another word about uh, Medibank, our, pro our proud sponsors. Um, they've been a proud sp supporter of Basketball Victoria and this event for the past two years, and we thank them for that. A minute 42 to go in this first quarter, and Sturt with an 11-point lead. Surely it's not over. Oh, no, <laughs> no. I think no. leads early in games don't really mean too much. It's, it's more if, if that lead can get to, to 20, then... You know, from a forest perspective, then, yeah, that's danger. But, you know, 11-point lead at this stage of the game doesn't really normally mean too much. So um, uh, I, I think that, you know, the game's still still wide open. And Brad, are we expecting a, a, a trap, a press at any point? Uh, I think both coaches so far have been mixing up their defences quite well. I, I think you're going to uh, continue that. We've seen both teams get into a trap uh, at some point, and both teams play man-to-man. -man. I do like that timeout, though, by the um, Sturt coach, Daniel Hebich. Um, it felt like Forestville was starting to get the offences that they want, um, and while Sturt were hitting some shots, and so the scoreboard probably wasn't uh, too much of a difference. It did feel like the Sturt shots were now not the uh, not necessarily the shots that they were looking for, whereas Forestville were getting what they wanted out of their offence. Yeah, a bit of a momentum swing and a handy timeout. I would agree with you there as we see the first free throw gets the friendly roll for Darcy Rees. Cuts the lead to just 10. Second one is up and second one is in and we've got a single digit ball game here. And a bit of a half court trap again just as we spoke about the different defences that teams are going to play and it forces a turnover and away come Forestville. Getting to the ring, that is a tough left hand finish. That is an impressive basket from Alice Sawyer. Great finish from Ella. She has the ability to finish on either side. We talked about her tenacity on defense, but her ability to get to the ring uh, against defensive pressure is second to none. And as we are talking about her, she comes up with a steal. Sturt looked to have got past the trap that time, but then just threw one too many passes. And now Sawyer will look to set it up at the top for Forestville. And that's what the press does to you. It speeds you up. And, uh, um, you know, we had a, a couple of plays there where players are uh, making decisions uh, at, at a higher pace than what they're normal, normally used to. Um, and, yeah, you, you, don't, you don't normally... Uh, for, for us who haven't been uh, in that defence, and, uh, um, yeah, great, I mean, great shot by uh, Tennille Pitt there. Uh, that, that's one that uh, Sturt desperately needed a after big, a couple of turnovers. A big triple and a handy one. And on top of that... Then Forestville try and throw a heave pass from behind the halfway and turn it over. This game toing and froing in the last two minutes. We've got 32. Will they try and take up as much clock as they can or will they push for the two for one? As we see another turnover here in this one, Forestville come away with it and there is a blocking foul in midcourt. Three second differential between the game clock. Uh, make that one second between the game clock and the shot clock. Uh, so we will likely see Forestville hold for one. Although they are in the bonus, so they'll get two free throws. 
Both uh, both teams still running the pressure there with a trap. Uh, both teams doing a half court one two one one trap. But um, yeah, the passing through it's not not good from either side at the moment. So it's certainly having an effect. Uh, I think we'll if both teams maintain it in the second quarter, we'll see which team comes on top is going to be the team that has the ability to push through that pressure. And do you think that's a case of nerves in such a big game, or the defenses are, are on point early? Uh, well, I think a bit of both. Um, I, I think in Sturt's case, um, their, their uh, organisation against this press uh, probably need, needs uh, looking at it uh, quarter time. But, uh, uh, yeah, obviously three turnovers in the last two minutes isn't, for, isn't, a, a, isn't good for them. As we see, the clock tick down here for the first quarter. We've got three, two, one. Tough right-hand finish misses. And that will be quarter time in this one. As we see Sturt take an early 22 to 13 point lead over Forestville, an impressive start for Sturt. High scoring start. High scoring and up tempo. Um, I, I don't see too many Sturt girls out there walking down the floor. I mean, uh, Forestville tried to mix up that tempo uh, with the trap. However, they uh, when they do break it through, it's at the ring. It's a quick shot, but it's quite often a good, good looking shot. Conversely, Forestville walking the ball up a bit more and uh, trying to hammer it inside, which is their strength. But at the end of the day, the team that gets the most layouts is likely to be the team that wins. So to do that, you need up-tempo basketball. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, Forestville certainly a deeper team uh, than, than Sturt. Um, so can Sturt uh, maintain the intensity uh, that, that they've been playing at? You know, it's, uh, certainly it's been good for them. But, uh, yeah, can they... Can they uh, continue to play at this pace? And we see on the replay after that early timeout from Forestville, there was much more of a focus on getting to the ring uh, with a focus on Darcy Rees in the middle. Uh, surely that has to continue because it looked like a better brand of basketball when they were doing it. I think so. I think um, noticeable difference after the timeout of focusing on getting it inside to Darcy. Uh, and it's purely going to be how well they can then work off her and how well she's able to finish around the ring under pressure. Um, the good thing about a girl that size is come the fourth quarter when the game's on the line and everyone's getting tired, she's not getting any smaller. Spoke it like a true big man, <laughs> uh, Brad. Well, the game's not tough when you've got a, when it, when you got a dominant big in there. As we are about to start the second quarter, Sturt will kick us off straight into it here in this grand final matchup between Forestville and Sturt under 18 as we see a pull-up triple... And both teams struggling from distance early. As a little knock from behind, but Forestville managed to hold on to the ball. Sawyer kicks it over to the wing and into a bit of a 2-3 zone by the chances of Sturt here. A cross-court pass, great vision again from Darcy Rees. And she gets the offensive rebound and hustles out of court. Great play all around as we see Sawyer with the left hand, not quite. Darcy Rees again, she's everywhere early. But this time, Sturt come away with it. Full court pass is deflected. We've seen a lot it, of those early. It does early. feel that uh, the momentum shifted to Forestville, but their inability to make it uh, count on the scoreboard may very well come back to haunt them later on in the game. I think Coach Daniel Habick is probably going to go back with Lizzie Williamson shortly, I would say. I think Aaron Blake, number nine, has done a, done a sterling job to uh, provide Lizzie with, uh, with some, some rest. But Because uh, Lizzie can't play the, the full 32 minutes. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Lizzie was certainly more effective against Darcy. As we see, a cross-court pass with 15 on the shot clock, so they've got lots of time. Another cro cross-court pass is going back and forth at the moment. Walker Roberts drives, and good defence, but called for the foul. The Maybe ref doesn't think it was good defence. <laughs> it's funny, I normally agree all the time with referees, uh -huh. which is just... Um, it might just be me that's always wrong then. <laughs> I thought that one was questionable, but uh, you, you can see she may have moved in slightly at the end, but uh, she did a pretty good job at the end of that play. Yeah, followed through potentially after the block, and we will see two free throws from Zoe Walker-Roberts. Both teams been relatively good from the free throw line early. Yeah, I, think, I think the key to that, though, is you've got to make the, the referees make the decision. So we can talk about it, whether it being a right call or a wrong call, but at the end of the day, Zoe had good aggression in there, and so a call was made. You keep settling for jump shots, and going to expect to get any fouls called on you. As we see once again the half court trap from Sturt. Will it force another turnover? A long pass but Forestville get out of it alright as we see 
into that free throw line area and another drive and kick and a late whistle but a foul nonetheless there and it was Gabriella Vidmar who drew the foul and it will be a first bill ball on the baseline. And uh, Eliza Joins uh, is the, the backup big for, for Forestville and she's a, she's a very good player in her, in her own right and uh, her, her dad Jason Joins played many uh, many state league games for Sturt and also played a lot for the Mount Gambier Pioneers yeah, in ga- the Siebel. Games record holder for Mount Gambier Pioneers mm. so he... Um He's a very big boy, uh, and uh, you know, he's coming through with his kids now at Forestville. And an, an excellent coach in his own right, too. He coaches in the, uh, in the South Australian State Program. So Sturt managed to get through a press, a floater, and the foul is called. It'll be two free throws again to Zoe Walker-Roberts as she gets to the line. And both teams really trying to get to the rim at this point because the deep ball isn't dropping. Yeah, exactly, and I think what uh, Sturt are doing defensively is a much better job of packing it in against penetration, whereas Forestville seem to be, uh, as soon as the first person gets beaten, uh, Sturt are at the ring and uh, making a good play at it. You, s- you saw before uh, uh, Gabby Whitmer penetrating through the keyway, although she drew the foul, there was at least three Sturt girls around her making it a tough, tough situation for her. And so the lead out to 13 points now for Sturt. As Forestville look to set it up and trying to get some more moment- momentum going, going their way, if I can get that out. Kick to the top and on again, but a steal. That was telegraphed. And look at the pace coming down the court. Left hand not so strong and a big block. Have a look at that from Gabriella Vidmar with some emphasis. Great play by Ruby Porter. Uh, Ruby's a, a bottom age player, an up and coming player. Fan- fantastic on the defensive end, very athletic. She can get the ball to the rim as she's doing here. Fantastic finish. And look at that from Ruby Porter, getting it done on both ends of the floor. Again, good deep penetration. Forest will struggle to get help side over there. Uh, way too easy from a defensive point of view. It's always it's always hard, isn't it, Brad? Because you, as a do you rely on the help or do you just say we'll stay in front of your player and? Forest will just aren't staying in front of their players. Yeah, it's obviously a combination of both. I think it's also a combination of the defensive system you, you put in place. So uh, do you have a traditional help side defence, in which case they're, they're way too slow on help side, or you have a have a more uh, up-and-coming uh, pack line defence and try and get help uh, from guard situation? And I think at the moment Forest was sort of in between the two and, and not really doing either very well. As we see, an N1 play from Eliza Joins very nicely on the jump shot, which is a rare occurrence. As we see, another midcourt foul, and the referee's making sure that this game doesn't get out of hand. Eliza's pretty good for mid-range, though. She, she's a big player, but she can step out and, and hit that mid-range and an even long-range jump shot, so uh, that, that's certainly her game. Yeah, I think she gets under, underutilised a bit in the, uh, in the pick-and-pop situation, which she, uh, which she can do very well. As we see a dribble handoff, getting to the ring again, and the left-hand floater this time no good, but an offensive rebound from Sturt, and they can reset and go again. The pull-up is no good from range, and both teams struggling from outside here in this one as it's a 28-16 to lead to Sturt, and now Forestville with 15 on the shot clock will look to get things going. Again, just no tempo from Forestville. It's five girls walking up the floor, absolutely nothing at the ring at the moment. Certainly feels like when they get when they get set up and uh, hammering it inside, they're dangerous. But at the moment, they're just not getting enough transition to warrant uh, any scoreboard pressure. And two teammates not on the same page on that play earlier. Ball thrown straight out of bounds, so Sturt will come away with it. And you cannot afford to do it in such big games like this. As we see the dribble handoff not happening, some good defense from Forestville, and they need to keep up this tempo down to single digits on the shot clock. This is good pressuring defence. If they can force a stop here, it'll be big for the momentum. And another long-range miss from Sturt and Forrest will come away with it. Again, that's that situation. Great defence. Now's your chance to try and build some tempo and momentum, but four or five girls running behind the level of the ball. And Alice Sawyer draws the foul on the block as she drove baseline. Alice Sawyer, fantastic play getting the ball to the rim. Um, if, if she can improve her her perimeter jump shot, then there's no doubt that she's got the potential to play for her country as, as, as she probably will. As we see a timeout. Now, Medibank have shown some great support this weekend for all those here at the Medibank Classic. 
There have been massages for the parents, a warm-up and warm-down zone for all players, including massages to help those tired muscles. I also hear that they provided sports towels and water bottles for all our players and referees across the weekend. And I even saw some referees getting some work done in that room earlier as well. Uh, are we entitled to get those massages, or I, is that just a player thing? I mean, I'll try and have a word. You haven't had one, Brad. No, no, I've just been sitting in the, in the bleachers all day, every day. It's uh, <laughs> taking its toll, I'll tell you that. As we can see, uh, we'll try and get somebody up here. I mean, one of those massage tables up here. I mean, I've got, I'm carrying a couple injuries. I wouldn't mind a couple of niggles. Wouldn't be against it. Uh, they do good work, I'm sure. So, a 12-point ball game in this one. Four minutes 39 to play in the second quarter. Anything you think either team needs. As we see on camera, look at this. Some of the Collingwood players, by the looks of things, enjoying a massage. And that looks like no luxury. Doubt, no doubt Snapchatting it at the same time. I think this is a bit of camera inception going on here. We've got some filming of some filming. How are those Collingwood boys going, mate? Dominating after a massage like that? I'd imagine you'd be pretty loose in the legs. Oh, you'd be getting up, that's for sure. I think I'll even on what. one leg I'd be able to throw down after oh. one of those massages. Mate, I'd, I'd go back to Duncan, which I haven't done in 10 years. Oh, I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that you haven't done it for 10 years. As we see Sturt come away with the ball, four and a half to play and a reach in foul. Well done by Zoe Walker-Roberts there. Again, pushing tempo, getting the ball into the uh, two feet into the paint. She's really creating uh, havoc for the, uh, for the Forestville defence. So one more foul and Sturt will go to the line. As we see... A 3-2 zone by the looks of things from Forestville. Sturt looking to move it around. They've got a long full shot clock. 15 seconds now. So watch out for Jasmine Rigoni here from the three-point line. As you said it, couldn't quite hit it on that occasion. But Forestville's 3-2 zone is going to be interesting considering they're struggling to contain penetration. Jasmine's a very, very good three-point shooter. So uh, if... Watch for her in the corners uh, against the 3-2 zone. I think in the semi-final, she had five or six threes from, from what his yeah, without what a miss. old man was with, telling with, me. Without a miss. Um, again, another former uh, state league great uh, for Sturt and, and Woodville. It's really, this tournament's fantastic from that point of view. You just wander the halls and you see all these former greats that are just around the place or coaching for various teams. We've seen Rachel Spawn here, Mark Bradkey. Chris Anstey, there's a lot of greats around the place. Uh, Warwick, Warwick Giddy coached the uh, the Melbourne Tigers team in the previous game. Um, so the Melbourne Tigers uh, have a whole heap of uh, uh, former greats coaching a lot of their teams. Yeah, the fanboy in me does get a little bit excited. Yeah, and, he, and his son was incredible in that game and apparently not a Vic Metro player. So look out for the 16-state uh, Vic Metro team. The Giddy name. As we see Sturt at the free throw line. Going to push that lead out, and that one yeah. pushes it out to 30 Zoe, points. Zoe Walker Roberts again, just uh, you know, fantastic on dual penetration. She's making sure that that Sturt aren't settling for for outside jump shots. Any any jump shots they do get are off of penetration where where there's uh, you know heat on the rim. And for such a big game, I'm very impressed by the free throw shooting percentage from both of these teams. Uh, normally in grand finals, you do see some struggles from the line as all the pressure's on you and the nerves can get the better of you, but some impressive shooting from the free throw line, some highly skilled players out here. I think see a, the a number of girls on both teams have played big games, like there's what is it, seven uh, girls played for SA Metro and, uh, in the uh, gold medal match, so that, they're probably okay with calming the nerves, uh, but for me it's, it's coming down to tempo and penetration, which Sturt seem to be doing a better job of at the moment. As you see Juliet Gordon get to the ring, and she needs to get into the game and is looking to do so. Again, this 3-2... Can Sturt make them pay from range? And no, they can't. And neither team has been able to do that. As we see, Alyssa Brett come through with an offensive rebound, get to the ring. She's been massive early in this one. Again, just an unbelievable rebound. She, she is just wherever the ball is. And uh, um, I think she'll be a, a very, very good player at the next level. There's no doubt she'll, she'll play in the WNBL like her mother. Uh, another, another former great, uh, Sandy um, and... Yeah, she she's certainly got a uh, you know a professional written all over her. You just can't teach that attack on the ball, can you guys? Oh, it's it's reading it off the ring. You can sit down with a kid for a hundred hours and watch replays of people shooting the ball off the ring, and you still don't have that instinct of where it's going to go. Oh. Speaking of, 
off her own she free shot, throw. Shot the free throw and saw where it was going to bounce before anyone else that should have been in the rebounding contest. Unluckily, he bounced it off her foot coming down with it, but gee, that is impressive. But, you know, she... Reminded me of the, uh, the Jordan free throw. <laughs> I, was thinking, thing. I was thinking the exact same thing. I was thinking the exact same thing. I think it was a violation, but they didn't call it, so that's the main thing. <laughs> Not when it's a highlight that good as we see another turnover. This time Sturt coming away with it. They've got the numbers, but Forestville managed to get back and even up. As we saw, a good recovery from Forestville. A 13-point game, two and a half minutes to go, and Forestville will be wanting to get it to 10 and under before halftime, you'd think. No question. You see they're, they're recognising Jazz Rigoni's hot form. Quick close out to her, which did a very good job on that occasion. And Jazz Rigoni hasn't... Uh, she's zero for one from the three-point line. She's got two offensive rebounds. You know, not something she's noted for, but a uh, fantastic job by Jazz. And we're seeing Sturt just settle a little bit here in this one. Settle for the outside jumpers. And it's something different having two teams that really know each other quite well here in the Classic. Yeah, I think that 3-2 zone that Forestville's gone into has forced those outside jump shots a bit because uh, it can be you can get the feeling against a zone that you're open rather than I can penetrate through the key. Just under two minutes to go in this one 13-point game. A couple of turnovers back-to-back -back from both teams as we see a drive to the ring and another miss. And we've just had a bit of a drought here on the scoreboard. Getting down to the end of the first half, a pull-up jumper short again, and now Forestville will come away with it. At least getting two feet in the paint, though, and, and, and testing the defence. Um, she did have open players, but, yeah, not a, not a bad shot in that. Uh, you know, if that goes in, everyone's clapping. So It's been the go-to for a couple of players here. As we see them wind down the clock down to six, and that mid-range jumper that we spoke about earlier, but this time is no good. Again, Forestville's offence... Probably didn't get any real ball movement, didn't get anything into it, and then six seconds left on the shot clock and have to force a shot that probably isn't high percentage. That's probably four or five trips in a row where they should have been going for a little bit uh, a little bit better shots. As we see Darcy Rees come back on after a break. So once again, sitting in this 3-2 from Forestville. Just over a minute to go here in the second quarter. Entry pass, kick to the wing, shot from range. One has to go soon, but it's not this time. At least the ball went inside, though, there. They're, they're playing inside out. You'd, you'd probably want to see it uh, see a bit more with the cutter going to the rim when, when that happens. But, um, yeah, at least the ball went inside out. As we see, a miss, an offensive rebound, and then potentially a travel. Good defence from Sturt. Darcy Rees had three players just surrounding her on that one. As we see, a timeout to Sturt. 43 seconds to go in the second quarter. How have you seen the game so far, guys? Uh, like, like we've been talking about, I think Sturt's uh, tempo and penetration has been the difference. I, I do like Forestville going into a zone there. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have it a 3-2 three, three, zone myself, given that Sturt's been penetrating so much. But what it has forced them to do is just take outside shots. Uh, where Forestville are then struggling is to then push the ball up themselves. So we keep seeing half-court offences and they're just not uh, having the attack on the ring that they need. Probably want to... Um, uh, from Forestville's point of view, um, you know, Juliet Gordon and, and Gabby Vidmar are probably two players that haven't really had an impact on the game. Uh, at the moment, it's really um, Ella Sawyer and, uh, and um, Darcy Reese uh, that, that are having the impact, whereas Sturt's main players have all had, a, had an impact. Alyssa Brett is having another fantastic game. Zoe Walker-Roberts. Uh, Lizzie Williamson is... Uh, uh, in foul trouble at the moment, but uh, you know she was very effective when she was on the floor. So that those those star players in the teams, uh, you know, I, I think Sturt, uh, their players are probably uh, doing a little bit better. Potentially very important last 43 seconds here of the second quarter. Who will take the momentum? Yeah, in Sturt got the opportunity. Break. Sturt, sorry, Sturt got the opportunity for a two for one here, and I think that's probably what that timeout was about. Get a shot up with. Around 30 seconds left on the clock, although they're wasting it. Yeah, I yeah. don't think it's going to happen, As uh, we're Brad. saying that, yeah. as we see a, another tip out of bounds, and that's been happening a lot, a lot of deflections out here from both sides. Eight seconds on the shot clock, and surely this is something, looks like a set that they've well, drawn the, up. The, well, this will be Alyssa Brett going to the, uh, to the basket, I would say. As we see no. a handoff, maybe didn't have enough time. Got to get it up with one second, and a good defense from Forestville. And if they can get a score here, as we see a foul, blocking foul, as Forestville look to bring the ball up. If they can get a score here, 
we might see them take a little bit of momentum in to the halftime break. I think on that play there, you, you want the ball in the hands of your, your best penetrator. Uh, Zoe Walker-Roberts not on the floor, but uh, Lisa Brett probably needed to have the ball in her hands. It was her, her play to make. Yeah, let her create for others. It'll be three. Three-point bomb is good from Amber Kaukan. And a big shot heading into the halftime break. It brings it back to a 10-point ball game. That makes such a difference on uh, on your mental attitude now coming in out of the half. You You'd imagine Sturt might be a little bit deflated to fight despite having a 10-point lead. Forrestville might be up and about despite being 10 points down. So uh, just that mental barrier of a, of a big shot hit and only being 10 points down or up now uh, changes the momentum of the game hugely. And just quickly, for anyone wanting more information on Medibank Private Health Insurance, they can call 13 23 31. That's 13 23 31. Or visit online at medibank.com.au. Our great sponsors there. An interesting and exciting uh, first half, despite not a whole lot of shooting from range. Uh, it's been an, an impressive game so far, I thought. Yeah, I, th I think it has. Um, you, you would have thought that the, the tempo of the game after uh, this is what their sixth game in, in three days would be, um, wouldn't be as high as what it is. But uh, Sturt are playing with more pace. Uh, and that, that's probably where they've got the advantage. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether they can keep that pace up. Again, Forestville going into the zone has probably slowed down uh, Sturt's pace. But, uh, you know, pace is a big buzzword in today's game. But, uh, you know, the, the team that generally plays with the most pace in today's game, uh, you know, is, is generally the team that does better. I think what's going to dictate is probably the next couple of minutes. You just see a, a pr pretty pretty close up of the uh, Forestville huddle there. Coach Holland absolutely ripping him. So I'd imagine Forestville going to come out pretty fired up, uh, ready to go hard. And like we talked about, that pace. Hopefully Forestville can now find a bit of momentum there to, to push the ball up a little bit harder than what they have been. And in like a lot of tournaments, only a two or three minute halftime break, and they're going to be straight back into it out here. So once again, that stamina, that aerobic capacity going to be tested here in this one as we see the final half of the under-18 girls competition. Ten-point lead to Sturt at this point. Forestville will start with it. If they can build on that last shot that they made and bring it into single digits with this first possession, we could be set for a very exciting second half. I think from Sturt's point of view, you want to be focused on, well, let, you know, let's get two or three stops in a row. Uh, at the start here, and that, that way you can rest that momentum back from, from the big shot. As we see the low post entry to guess who, Darcy Rees up and under move, but some great defence from Elizabeth Williamson and an early foul this time going on at Forestville. I quite like that first up play from Forestville, though, knowing Lizzie Williamson's in foul trouble, getting it inside to Darcy Rees, who's probably been their best performer so far. Going hard at the ring, uh, you take the fact that Lizzie just had superior defence there. Hey, good def I mean, good basketball, Brad. I mean, well, well designed play, uh, good post up, good move by Darcy, um, great defence by Lizzie. You know, good basketball all around. As we've seen, like off the ball foul by the looks of things on Darcy Rees. Yeah, it looks like Darcy's now picked up two quick fouls this quarter already, so she may find herself in foul trouble if she keeps that up too much longer. As Sturt will look to make. A play from the inbound underneath the basket. Straight pass into the low block, but Williamson couldn't get it to go. And this time, Forestville come away with it. All the pull-up didn't quite go to plan. Loose ball. As we see, a double team already from Darcy. And I think that was too long in the key, which is a call that you don't see that much anymore. Great D by Lizzie Williamson again. But you've got to like, from Forestville's point of view, that they're throwing the ball to their best big player in the low block. Yeah, deep catch there. I actually think Darcy should have just gone up strong with it if Lizzie happens to be good enough to block her. Um, so bad, but Darcy had a nice deep inside seal. She's got to go to the ring on that one. Brad, you're getting your, uh, your, your wish of the, uh, the, the, the match-up, the, the, the two big players matching up and, and playing good basketball. It's yeah, correct. Been super impressed by Lizzie Williams in the uh, first couple of minutes here. She stopped Darcy twice and drawn two fouls on her. As we see a basket from Sturt pushing the lead out to 12. And again, Zoe Walker-Roberts getting the ball to the rim. Just She's been uh, pretty close to the best player on the floor. Been very hard to stop. Another low post entry. The double team comes. Another stop by Lizzie. And this matchup 
almost dictating the flow of the game at the moment. And that's three times in a row that it's been a great defensive stop from Liz Williamson. Yeah, Forestville now putting a few more penetrators onto the floor, so might be looking to go back to a little bit more inside the key off penetration than just watching Darcy go to work. So six, just over six and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter as we see a turnover from Sturt. Neither team really able to take advantage of the opposition's turnovers at this point. No, that, that one really wasn't against pressure. I mean, the turnovers in the first half were largely due to the forcing traps that you're, that you're seeing Sturt now into. Um, whereas that one was not a lot of pressure, just a ball handling passing Some turnover. Great passing from Forestville, and we see Reese step out this time, but couldn't hit the mid-range jump shot. And some great ball control and a late foul call. Uh, the rebounding machine, uh, Alyssa Brett. Um, she she is outstanding. Yeah, she would have had at least ten and a half, I would have thought, so ten rebounds. That is. Surely would be on triple-double watch on nearly every single game she plays. Yeah, she's, she's that sort of player. Um, and, and, again, there's, there's no doubt she's a, she's a player that will be looking to play in the WNBL at some stage and, uh, and, and also looking to play for her country. A great offensive set that time from Sturt as we saw Ruby Porter get a wide-open left-hand layup and she managed to finish. And it's the first time we've seen some real easy, cheap baskets from either team at this point. Yeah, first time we've seen an offense be the, the reason for the score as to just far better superior basketball. Yeah, Sturt running their, their Princeton Chin series and getting a getting a nice uh, uh, nice layup off that uh, that shuffle cut and not, not something at this level that is normally open. It's more uh, um, sets the, the rest of the play up. But yeah, bit of a bit of a defensive breakdown by Forestville to allow that. So we've got 12 seconds on the clock here for Forestville. And a travel, I think, or just a switching of the pivot feet on that occasion. 5.50 to go in the third. And it's a 14-point game. And a chance to push it out to above 15 here for Sturt. And maybe this game, to just get a little out of grasp for Forestville, they need to start making their move soon. Yeah, the, the next two minutes again, like I said about the last two minutes, is going to be super important. Uh, if, if Sturt push this out to beyond 16, 18 points. It's going to be tough to come back. If Forestville can get it back to within 10 points, then they're going to be right in the game again. And the defensive presence of Alice Sawyer again coming into fruition that occasion. As we see, a double team straight away from Rees. But guess who came away with it? It was Alice Sawyer. They've got 10 seconds on the shot clock. Kick to the top. That would be handy for Forestville. And it goes. Big shot that time from Madeline Griffiths. I'll tell you what, though, Scott and Matt, if you saw a guard get hit like Darcy just did, the foul would have been called. Yeah, mid-court you would have seen the foul. I agree with you on that one. Yep. As we see Forestville here, a chance to build on that earlier three-pointer. Baseline drive, no foul okay, called. Thanks. Sawyer kicks to the wing, another three-point attempt. Short this time. If they could string a couple of those together, the gap would close very, very quickly. I don't mind that shot. It felt like Forestville had the momentum there. Um, Quick shot. They did look to push early, pulled out. Quick shot. That's not a bad shot. It was a good one, and, and Gabby's a, a good three-point shooter. So you know you, you got to like your chances with that one. And a changeover of possession here. So he's Forest will come away with the ball, and they would really like to push this under single digits here as they look to bring it up past the half-court trap. That's a long high ball, tough one to catch, but Reese somehow does it. Gathers Great hands. It in. We've got 12 on the shot clock as Sawyer looks to go to work. Spin up and under, and two free throws. Sturt not too pleased with that call, potentially a charge, but she'll earn her trip to the line. Well, she yeah. put her hands in at the end, and yeah, you know she did all the work, uh, did, did a fantastic job to Neil Pitt there, and uh, on a, a very good uh, penetrator and just ruined it at the end by putting her hands in. Yeah, I think she just lost her footing as she was sort of falling to the ground. Uh, yeah. She was about to give up a layup, so maybe even a, a deliberate foul there, or a, hoping that a charge gets called. But um, yeah, a little bit of contact, lost the footing, and slapped down with the arm. As we see, Alice Sawyer makes both cuts the lead to single digits, and she's been big here in this last couple of minutes, doing a lot of the important one percent of things. As we see, Sturt would really like just a calming basket here in this one. As we see, the low post entry wanting to happen, but it doesn't this time. Kick across. Thought about pulling the trigger on that one. Zoe Walker-Roberts now in the pick and roll with not long on the shot clock. Got to get that shot up. It's deep and it's short. And another good defensive set from Forestville. And Sturt may be thinking of a timeout soon. I think Zoe there needed to uh, refuse the screen and go baseline. Um, she, 
she went over the top, ran straight into the pack, and uh, uh, Ruby Porter had to throw up a, a prayer. Yeah, that uh, that pack line defence concepts they were talking about of forcing that guard to just kick it back out in the end. I think it was Ruby Porter had the ball a step beyond the three point line. That was always going to be a tough shot. So some good offensive ball movement there from Forestville, and it sees Lauren Marshall go to the line. Really wanted to go to that right hand, despite maybe having the left hand open but she earns two free throws. Yeah, Lauren Marshall has come from the uh, VJBL. I, I believe it was Diamond Valley. Uh, moved to Adelaide earlier this year, I, I think, uh, or, or late last year. Um, and, uh, yeah, a very impressive player. So I, I believe it was Diamond Valley Eagles she was playing with before. I, I'm sure they would be so, so to have seen her go. Yeah, very good uh, female program there down at Diamond Valley. So an eight-point ball game, and they get the offensive rebound as we see Rees with the low block. The double doesn't come this time. She wants to hook around a great pass, great vision again, and now the timeout comes from Sturt as Forestville bring this game to just six points, and it is game on here. They just played around with the scoreboard for a second. I thought it might have been five points, but six points. Good timeout by Sturt. Momentum clearly all with Forestville at the moment. Sturt have uh, been setting that double. Uh, it's been Zoe Walker-Roberts coming over and, and doubling. Uh, obviously, um, recognising that uh, even though Lizzie's a, a good post defender, that Darcy is a handful down there. Um, and uh, they need to make sure they get the, uh, the, the second rotation. So Because Darcy is a good passer as well out of the post um, to, to make sure she, that uh, she, she can't make the assist. I'll tell you what, if you're around Melbourne... I'd get down to the State Centre here because it is basketball haven. There's games going on everywhere. Uh, even though we've got the gold medal match here over on the court next door, we've got uh, a boys match going on. It is all happening and there's still time to get down and see some very, very high quality basketball. Can I just uh, shout out to the, uh, the Sturt Under-16 boys for, for winning, the, uh, winning the Under-16 boys title here at the, the National Junior Classic um, Coach Andrew Janke has done a, a, an amazing job with a with a, a very talented to group of boys, and um, they um, I think it might be our first ever group that's uh, backed up an under 14 boys Australian Club Championship win with a with an under 16 National Junior Classic title. So we're we're we at Sturt are all very proud of them, and uh, and a great job by the coaching staff and. Uh, and uh, you know, a fantastic group of boys. And some very gutsy shooting late in that one. I managed to catch the end of it and some very, very gutsy Wait, shooting. Uh, was it Joel Dyer just absolutely on fire in that yeah, game? Look, that last look he, he, is, he is, for anyone that saw it, he is an elite shooter. Um, and uh, uh, Seb Griffin is just, a, just uh, an absolute outstanding player and will no doubt uh, be a, a very good player at the next level. Yeah, a, we, lot, a lot of talent in that under 16 Sturt team, I think. Five or six eight players in that uh, in that side. Yeah, very good, very very good side, and and I, I think they're well coached. But I think they're a great great uh, group of uh, boys. They're, they're fantastic young men as well, and uh, you know, we're we're very proud of them. As we get back to this one, and we saw uh, Forestville have an attempt, and it looked like Sawyer drove hard to the ring. However, didn't get the foul calls. We see a little push off. The and Sawyer Brett uh, matchup. I. I was talking to Brad about this before the game, and it was I, I described it as the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. So, As we see a deep two in this game, just getting a little bit physical, but there's nothing wrong with that. Bit of excitement for the fans. Picked up the dribble, so needs some help, some good and pressure Sawyer, from Sawyer. Sawyer and Brett again. Yeah. Uh, that matchup, as we were talking about, but I think both have played exceptional as well. So both mm. are high rebounders. Tenacious defenders. Brett's probably done a bit more offensively, but uh, Sawyer's been a little bit better defensively. So, as expected, they've been outstanding. And guess who comes up with the rebound as we were talking? Alice Sawyer. She's been massive in this third quarter, has led the charge for Forestville. It's an eight point ball game. For those who don't know, Ella's a, a bottom age player as well. She's got a, another year of under 18s to go, and uh, she'll be in line for the next. Uh, for the next uh, Gems uh, Australian under 17 team. She makes a great entry pass, but Forestville sadly couldn't finish. They get a full shot clock for those people at home. The shot clock resets to 24, not for 14, like in some of the senior competitions. A great entry pass. The double doesn't come, and Darcy Rees gets on the board here in this third quarter. Yeah, good good body seal there by Darcy. She felt where Lizzie was, and then uh, Ella recognising the mismatch, uh, Darcy having the position and just hammering it in there. 
minute and a half to go here in the third quarter. Six-point ball game. And it's just tightening up a little bit as we see some more physical defense. A tight struggle under the ring from Rees and Williamson. But it's Forestville that come away with it. As we see a kick to the baseline. And a pull-up jump shot. The bank might be open, but sadly not on a public holiday. As we uh, see Sturt need, come Sturt away need to push here. They've got, they got numbers. They've got numbers and they've got Forestville girls jogging oh. back. But Except Sawyer again. She's been Sturt. excellent. Great pass. Potentially a charge call. And we'll wait to see what the ref has to say. Yes. Foul on Alice Sawyer. It was a good pass, but sadly her momentum just took her forward and a good defensive I mean, play great, from Sturt. Great defence by Tamil Pitt, I think, there. But how about the run by, by Zoe walker Robert? She was a quarter of a court behind the play. And she she's the one that may have forced the uh, the turnover at the end. Fantastic uh, tenacity by, by a very good player. Yeah, both teams making mass subs here. It looked like um, a couple of girls struggling to run the floor as hard as they should have been then. So don't mind any of those subs. Uh, we'll see how this changes the momentum. The physicality has definitely gone up here in this third quarter as we just have just under a minute to play before the final break. Six-point ball game. Sturt have the ascendancy like they've had all game. As we see a handoff and a left-handed triple goes up. It is short. And Jasmine Rigoni, known for a three-point shooting, wasn't pleased with their miss on that occasion, as most people would be, I assume. She, she, he, she has got... Very deep range, but uh, that was a that was a very very deep three pointer. That may not be uh, even her range. And a two yeah, for one know. opportunity. Coach yeah. is too impressive that one. Mm. Two for one opportunity here for Forestville. Will they take advantage of it? Maybe not. As we see, Rees the double doesn't come, and she can go to work and she can finish. Strong play from Forestville. Lead back to four. This is the lowest. Yep. It's been in a long time. With, with those two for ones, you don't want to risk a, just a quick, silly shot. If you can get a good inside shot, then, then you go for it whenever the time happens to be. So, uh, one or two second. Up with a two for one here. Sorry about that. One or two second differential between the shot clock. As Forestville have five seconds if they can get something off, it's going to have to be a half court heave. Oh, it was almost good. As we enter the three quarter time break, and it is game on here at the State Centre. A four-point lead to Sturt How Forestville have the momentum. Uh, just a final word about our sponsors. In addition to Many Bank, we would also like to recognise our other partners. Moulton, Champion Apparel, Sport in Focus, Sports Cast Australia, Melbourne United, Good Life Health Clubs and Schweppes. Fellas, we look like we've got a serious game on our hands in this last quarter. This is what we wanted. Yeah, I think it's going to be an exciting finish here. Um it's going to be the big names. It's going to be uh, it's going to be Darcy Rees. It's going to be Lizzie Williams. It's going to be uh, um, Ella Sawyer and Zoe Roberts and all those big names that we've been talking about all day. Uh, Alyssa Brett, sorry. Um, who steps up better? Who's more composed down the stretch? Uh, and which team's willing to use the pace and penetration of the game? We've seen the momentum swing with whoever's looking to run harder. Yeah, I think again. I, I, I think there's there's definite momentum with Forestville here. Uh, again, they they are a, a deeper team, um, and uh, that after seven games, six games in, in three days, that that may take a toll in the fourth quarter. However, um, you know the the, the Sturt players, Zoe Walker, Roberts, Alyssa Brett, um, uh, Taylor Prenzler, all very dogged players, and they they certainly will be giving it their all. There's there's pretty high stakes here. Um, Sturt have never won an under-18 girls um, uh, National Junior Classic and neither are Forestwood. So uh, it's going to be a first uh, for, for either club. And you reckon Scott Sturt will still be carrying that chip on the shoulder from uh, a few weeks back that you're talking about? I think there, there's certainly motivation. There, there's always motivation, but uh, there might be extra motivation there. But um, these, these teams are both... Um, uh, very you know, incredible competitors, but they're also friends off the court. So, but but they they want to beat the the living daylights out of each other, you know, on the court, and they're doing that at the moment. All to play for here in this one, and I noticed the crowd started to get a little bit vocal in the third. There's a big Sturt supporter base over to the right of us. Hopefully, they get vocal heading into this last quarter. Four point game, a couple of misses either side. Yeah, for those that don't know, Sturt and Forestville stadiums are 10 minutes away from each other, so none of these girls probably go to school together, uh, know each other socially off the court. 
It's a bit like Duke in North Carolina, isn't it, uh, Brad? It's not eight mile, but it's uh, uh, it's pretty close. As we see, a miss from Forestville coming down neither side, able to get on the board. There's a run open again. Pull up, no, little hezzy dribble, just too strong in that low block, we, an impressive finish. We've been waiting for Juliet Gordon to explode all game. We, we've mentioned her as being one of the keys as well, a big name that needs to play big. Hopefully that will spark her from a Forestville perspective. Down to just a one-possession ball game in this one, and the crowd does start to get a little bit more vocal. A Sturt miss, and they just need to wrestle back some of the momentum here. It's all Forestville at this point. Low post entry. And there's a reach-in foul called. Good positioning that time from Amber Kyakun. And, and like I was saying, you can see the noticeable difference. Forrest now looking to push the ball up. Quick inside touch going out the ring. Sturt jogging back with it. Offense as well. Yeah, it's, it's that pace, isn't it? You know, the team that plays with the, uh, the greater pace in the, in the modern game is the team with the advantage. So 6.20 to go here in this game, the gold medal match. Oh, and a reach in foul by the looks of things. A little head fake, a bit of a Euro step that time. And Amber Kalkan, she's on fire at the moment. She's looking to be very aggressive getting to the ring and a chance to tie the ball game if she can knock down both. Yeah, Amber playing some absolutely crucial minutes whilst Ella Sawyer is on the bench. So uh, any productivity we can get on offense from her is going to be absolute value. And a very, very short break from Melissa Brett as she steps back on the court. I, I was saying to a couple of colleagues today, I think in games like this, you, I think there are certain players that you say, well, you're going to go play 40 minutes. Well, in this case, 32. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised Alyssa Brett uh, spent, spent uh, any time on the bench. She's so, uh, so crucial to Sturt's chances. And she's like back on the floor now. And it looked like both, both teams went with the, uh, the Kobe subbing rule of keeping them off at the start of the th uh, fourth quarter. And... Alyssa Brett back on and Ella Sawyer about to sub back in as well. And a tied ball game here in this one. We're set for a very exciting last six minutes here in this gold medal match of the under-18. And an offensive foul called. And just nothing going Sturt's way at this point in time. That's the difference between now and the first quarter. That first quarter, Lizzie, was probably a little bit more set. They were able to get into the keyway a little bit deeper. This time, Lizzie, not quite as set. And the penetration nowhere near as deep in the keyway. And, uh, and again, I think that you know the depth. Uh, you know, is is now six games in three days. Forest will go um, go very deep with their with their star. I mean, our Amber is uh, you know an example of that, and she's really coming to the fore now. That is a massive shot and a massive start from her. Forest will take the lead for uh, potentially the first time in the whole game. Huge play, five and a half to go in this one. Everyone on the edge of their seats already, and surprise, surprise, it's Alyssa Brett who answers back a much-needed basket, but here come Forestville on the return. Big-time play from a big-time player. As we see, Rees get the ball a little bit further out than she's used to. And you Forestville notice, lead by you, a point. You, you notice uh, Brett has gone on to Calcon as well. I mean, she she is the, uh, the, the, the stopper. And look at this, bodies just piling on top of each other. Trying to get that ball, and on the bottom of it, surprise, surprise, it was Alice Sawyer, but Sturt win the jump ball. I'm absolutely Arrow. loving the intensity this quarter's come out with. Uh, you've got, seen multiple girls on the floor, but not just that play, last couple of plays, it's been no one giving up an inch. We're seeing offensive fouls due to hard screens. We're seeing it all here. It's an exciting last quarter here. The pull-up quickly, no good, but an offensive rebound from Sturt. Flick back in, stolen. And away comes Juliet Gordon. Oh. And just some sleeping on defense from Sturt allows her to get her feet into the key, but they managed to collapse. And they left Amber open as well there. Lucky not to have paid the price. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Jeez, if Forestville could get a score here, it would be massive. And guess who? Amber Kalkan, she's everywhere here in the fourth quarter. Another great seal and a great finish. She's that is just a good high percentage basketball she play. She has got amazing touch around the ring. Amber came from Darwin to Adelaide, I want to say about 18 months ago, and has soon uh, settled in and, and now in, in part of the uh, SA Metro State. Great crossover from Alyssa Brett. And she finishes. How good was that? I in think, tight. I, I, th I think Alyssa, Alyssa's... One of her, her great qualities is she, she's a winner. She, if, if Sturt are going to win this game, it'll probably be Alyssa Brett sort of willing, 
willing Sturt over the line. And it's looking that way at the moment. She's willing them into the game and keeping them in the game as we see a full court pass was tipped. I thought Zoe Walker-Roberts fantastic on transition defence there. She, she was back and uh, she broke up the play, almost certain to for, for Darcy Rees. Oh, as we Ooh. see somebody hit the ground there, low post entry. Reese pull up, bank shot, no good. Offensive rebound, too big on that occasion. Gordon, charge call. Wow, that's a big call here in this one. Guess who? Alyssa Brett. And pleading her case to the umpire, but nothing she can do to get that call reversed. I tell you what, I've never had a call reversed from arguing with an umpire. I don't know about you guys, uh, but... It's, no. it's the psychology of the next <laughs> call. I think you'll find you can argue as much as you want, and the umpire may give you the next one. <laughs> or may resent yeah. you. So I'm not sure it's the right, te- uh, right method anyway. So a one-point point ball game, just under four minutes to go here in this gold medal match. Pick and roll, looking to be set for Alyssa Brett. Drives hard on the left hand, kicks to the corner, and a much-needed triple for Sturt. Bang, bang, and they go ahead by two, back and forth these two teams are going. Fantastic playoff pick and roll by, uh, by Alyssa Brett, getting her feet in the paint, uh, spotting a, uh, a great three-point shooter in Taylor Prenzler in the corner. Sawyer goes to work, in and out, this great. way, that way. I don't know if that was a pass, but if it was, it was pretty good. By I the mean, way she reacted, I don't think I it think was. I think would claim it, but I'm pretty sure that was a running sky hook. Forest will seem to have lost a bit of control in their offense now, so Sturt doing a better job of... Uh, poison penetration. 44 apiece. A great lob pass, but a tough finish. And guess who draws the two free throws? Alyssa Brett. Another O ball. Somehow fi- found the ball amongst a bevy of players. I think she was at the three point line when that shot went up. Uh, and and it just worked out where it was going to land and got to it. It's what she does. I mean, she, she is just a. Uh, has a fantastic knack for just being wherever the ball is, and you know she'd be, she'd be at 20 plus rebounds. She'd be on triple double uh, watch. It. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, we just saw the replay there, and I'm pretty sure that was an Ella Sawyer shot. So, by her reaction, smiling up the court, I would have to agree with you on that one. Just over three minutes to go here in this final quarter. A tied ball game. This is what we want. Well, it's what I wanted. I don't know if it's what you guys wanted, but it's what I wanted. Oh, it's good good for basketball. You always want a close game, and then someone hit a hit a three on the on the buzzer to win it. Hopefully, Forestville. <laughs> uh, any thoughts on what the teams need to specifically do here entering this last three minutes? What's going to win either team the game? I, th- I, th- I think now you're, you're at a point where you need to execute in the half court, both offensively and defensively. So um, Sturt need to, from Sturt's point of view, make sure that uh, uh, Darcy Rees doesn't catch the ball deep. If she does catch it, then they're bringing the, uh, the, the double team from maybe one of the lesser players. But Forrest will don't have any of those. They're all very, very good players. So you get to choose your poison a little bit. Down the, uh, down the other end, I'd be uh, putting Alyssa Brett into pick and roll. Yeah, correct. You've seen Sturt's last triple come from Alyssa Brett pick and roll. I think Forestville are starting to find different ways to score other than just being Darcy Rees. However, Alyssa Brett pick and roll is tough to stop. So we'll see Brett at the line for two shots and misses the first one. Maybe some nerves, maybe some fatigue, who knows. This one to put them up by a point with three minutes and four seconds on the clock and she misses two from two. A good attempt at the offensive rebound, but it'll be Forestville ball, and it is all to play for here in this last three minutes. Once again, some slight full court pressure from Sturt. Nothing over the top. We'll see a bit of a horns action coming out here. Sawyer with the pick up, the up and under, and one. That is a big play from a big player. Yeah, I think that was probably what they uh, structured out of the timeout. You had Gabby Vidmar about to open up for a three-point shot or Ella Sawyer at the ring. Um, very well run, but in saying that, that was a tough split that Ella just did and split two of them and got to the ring and got fouled. And I scored. think mi- mix up on pick-and-roll defense by Sturt as well wasn't, uh, wasn't their best possession. And a missed free throw from Sawyer means the lead's only two. And now Sturt have a chance potentially to run the ball, but Zoe Walker-Roberts very happy just to take a bit of time Get some poise. They're down by two points in a huge, huge game. It is all to play for. Low post entry was kicked by Juliet Gordon. And we'll see a shot clock reset because of it. A full 24 for Sturt. I think most of the games uh, this year between the two uh, clubs have been very close games. And it's just been for- Forestville have, have won every game. There's been one draw. And it's just been their, their greater 
poise uh, down the stretch, uh, and uh, you know you'd, you'd favour Forestville from here uh, because of that. Well, well, like I said earlier, uh, quarter one, Darcy Reeves isn't going to get any smaller. Mm. So a two-point lead to Forestville, and now they have a chance to build on it, a chance that they haven't had hardly at all in this game. Looks like going back to the horns. I oh, know, mixing up a bit. Rees will set the on-ball pick. Kick to the wing, Sawyer. Deep shot, no good. Rees oh, somehow managed to bring that one in. And then somehow manages to bring it in again. And we will see, I think it's a foul call, a reach in. I'm Darcy not, Rees, great I'm hands. I'm not convinced Ella Sawyer for the three-point uh, play was the best option for Forestville. We're down the stretch, we need to either be getting at the ring or having pure shooters shoot the ball. As we can see on the replay, look at the hustle from Rees. And she has earned her way to the free throw line. Looked like it was all ball to me. Yeah, but you, you you have to not put yourself in a situation where the referee makes that call. Yeah. Knocks down the first, pushes the lead to three, now has a chance to push it out to a two-possession ball game if she can knock down this free throw. And she does. Some clutch shooting at the line there from Forestville. Two minutes to go, four-point ball game. Sturt haven't been in this position all game. As we see, Alyssa Brett bring the ball up the court. Yeah, There's a bit of pressure. Here coming, I would have hoped. Here she gets the handoff. Sawyer guarding her. This is the matchup we wanted. Again to that left and back to the right. Some great defense from Sawyer. A minute 40 to go and Forrest will come away with it, pushing the ball. Now, and it comes out to Sawyer. I doubt she'll be shooting it from range after that last attempt. Here comes that horns we were talking about. On the pop action, deep three. Bang! That is a massive shot from Gabriella Vidmar. We haven't <laughs> seen Gabby all game. I haven't noticed her one bit, and that is a big three. But that uh, that horns play, it's been a play that I think everyone's known about for about 20 years. Um, first first time they run it, get to the ring. Second time they run it, open three. Well, they ran that at the uh, at the end of the first half too to get the, uh, the the big three going to the half. But Gabby Vidmar, big shot there, and yeah, she she's a gamer. She is a she's a she hasn't. Uh, been as prominent today, but you, you know that she's a she's a, a big time performer in the clutch again. Another bottom age player who'll be looking to play for her country at some stage, but uh, a big shot. Great read from Alice Sawyer as well, able to come off that pick and then look back to where she came from and kick it to the open shooter. And we were talking about uh, uh, father daughter and that sort of stuff. Uh, <laughs> Gabby Vidmar's parents are. Uh, 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 Aurelio Socceroos coach, uh, assistant coach, sorry, for a number of years there. And and the mother was a, was a state league netballer, but may have very well been uh, a national league. So a seven-point ball game, a minute 25 to go. Sturt find themselves down after leading for the majority of this game and really need to start making some shots or it's going to be far too late. Well, it's, there, there's two parts to the uh, to, to the equation, isn't it? You need to make some shots, but you need to get some stops. And uh, uh, Forestville have uh, have just executed well down the stretch uh, in the half court, as they have done in most of the big games between uh, yeah. these teams over the, over the year. The other side of it is uh, Alyssa Brett being guarded by Ella Sawyer. Um, so, while mm -hmm. most games you want Alyssa Brett coming off that, I'm not sure you do if Ella's guarding her. So an almost identical play ran by Sturt, but that time the shot couldn't go for them. But it was more contested, you know, like Forestville uh, switched the, uh, the the flare pick there and uh, made Taylor Prince take a take a tough shot. So the, the difference for Forestville was the play before was at the ring, aggressive, uh, and so Sturt were thinking, oh, we need to pack it in, and so the open three came as a result. Fully aware at the moment, it's either Alyssa Brett at the ring or it's someone trying to shoot a three. So a turnover now. Sturt will get another opportunity. The pull up is short, and there's a foul on the rebound, and it's against Forestville. Which Lizzie means Williams did a fantastic job there of getting good early deep position, and Darcy Rees found herself out of position and having to give up the foul. Good foul though. I mean, you know, one foul to give now. They had they had two, so um, yeah, good foul. So Sturt with the inbound play off this one. Comes out to Walker Roberts. And they need to get a quick shot. There's a bit too much looking around at each other here. And another lob play after a horns. It's a deep triple heaved up. Back rim. 
Sturt, no, Forrest will come away with it, and that could very well be it in this one. I'm 35 seconds. Sorry, I'm not convinced Sturt needed the three there. They uh, kept going for it. I would have liked to have seen maybe even Zoe Walker-Roberts come going at the ring. Yeah, it's, the it's a three-possession game, so yeah, you, you don't need threes. You need One of them needs to be a three, but, uh, but apart from that, you need... Uh, and just a heave from three, offensive rebound, and that will pretty much do it unless Sturt decide to foul... What a comeback from Forestville here in this one. That momentum swung on an absolute probably one-minute period, I think, and it started with uh, Amber Kalkin. And just one to rub it in a little bit from Juliet Gordon. Some might say that's a bit of disrespect, but she launches that triple, and some of the Forestville uh, players got a little bit excited and sprinted on the and floor, but they're still pointing on a second ago. And some of the spectators as well. I <laughs> have to hold back Juliet's parents there from running onto the court. But a big win from Forestville come from behind, and they end up winning this game by 10 points. Sturt just struggled to get the ball in the basket late, struggled to get stops, but a massive come from behind victory win. from Forestville, and all credit to them. A great game. Just your final thoughts, boys. Well, I think all credit to Forestville for uh, down the stretch they were the more composed team. They had their defensive schemes organised, uh, did a great job containing Alyssa Brett and Zoe Walker-Roberts down the stretch and made big plays and big shots, but they did that because of fantastic offensive execution. Well done to, uh, to, to Forestville and uh, particularly Coach Lynn Holland, who's a fantastic coach. and uh, She's won a, uh, uh, an Australian Championship gold medal uh, with the under-16 girls and now a National Junior Classic. Yeah, for me, uh, I think like Scott kept mentioning, the depth in the end showed out. So once once the tempo of the game settled, everyone got uh, a little bit less nervous in the second half. It's quite clear for us who had probably two or three more scoring options that Sturt didn't quite have. Uh, became quite one-dimensional there for Sturt, just trying to make Alyssa Brett um, do everything. And when you've probably got the best defensive guard in the, uh, in the age group guarding you, it's very tough to do that. So there you go, a 10-point victory for Forestville. They run out winners 54-44. to 44. I'd like to thank Brad Hayden and Scott Butler for joining me today. Uh, thanks, fellas, for those special comments. Very insightful. Thanks, Matt. And uh, thank we you. will head to the presentation in just a second, but there you have it. Under-18 girls, gold medal goes to Forestville.
So what we'll do now is we'll have our silver medal presentation. May I ask please Daniel, coach of Sturt, to come up and say a few words and introduce his players. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to say that uh, Forest Hill, you're a champion team.
And ladies and gentlemen, we're all stand just getting their photos. We have one last special duty to perform. And that's to award the most valuable player for this gold medal grand final. And the MVP today, MVP today, is from the winning team. We'll just let that photo go. And come on down, number 44, Thank you.